Welcome to the Influence Factory podcast. This program is dedicated to support professionals who have a desire to develop their digital business influence so they can navigate through a fast-paced, constantly growing digital world. We invite newcomers as well as our family of business influencers to a place to play, share ideas, questions, tips, and guidance with other thought leaders around the globe. Sit back and enjoy our program with our host, Dean Delisle, as he interviews guests. News and commentary is provided by Kate Hassett and Jackson Delisle. Power Move lessons are provided by the Influencer Marketing Department at Social Jack. And production, editing, and distribution is provided by the Social Jack production team. So what I want to do is officially announce our guests uh, for today, uh, which is our team. So we have uh, Kate Hassett joining us from the Influencer Marketing Department and Jackson Delisle from the uh, um, uh, Production Department and then myself uh, from, uh, I don't know, uh, I started this whole thing, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, and so uh, with that being said, what's amazing is this segment is on social streaming and how to build your influence. And I think the most important thing is um, we've been doing this for a long time, like even before people knew it was a thing. So in in us doing it, I think a lot of times we step over the things that, that we forget that there are fears that people have, there are things that, that come up for people where they just don't feel comfortable doing this. And <clears throat> one of the things that I think um, is important is that we do a lot with helping businesses build their brand through the people. We call it humanizing the brand. And I think <clears throat> in a collaborative nature, I think this is one of those things where if you could uh, get your company involved, which is probably one of the hardest things to do, if it's, especially if it's a small company. And we've seen this, Kate, with people with 15 and under, even 10 and under. It's like, pick pick three. Pick three people to get started with. And, and let's determine that we're going to go out together on social media. That's the first sort of breaking the myth of, of this fear. It doesn't have to be all alone. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be just, uh, you know, the brand posting from the brand and then somebody else in the social media department. It should be about the people in there. So um, I think this uh, streaming factor has a huge brand awareness thing and you deal with that on our clients. So can you help the listeners just understand a little bit from the simplicity of how it is coaxing and getting clients to just get ready to do a stream? Yeah. So um, in, in streaming strategy, it's, it's just still a different aspect of your marketing strategy. So whenever I'm talking to our clients about what we should be streaming, it's just the first, the first question is what is important to your audience? Like what do they want to see? So at Wild Adventures, when I worked at the theme park in Georgia, you know, it was interesting because we had a lot of people on staff that would always come up to me at events and be like, don't you think you should live stream this? And it'd be like kids playing in a puddle, you know, in a, 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 a puddle mat or like on the playground. And you're like, mm, I was going to save the live streaming for, you know, the concert later on, you know, the big events. So that was something that was really important to our brand and our value is that we had an event going on every single weekend. So we worked streaming into our content strategy. What are the important things to your audience about your brand and how can we make that an effective stream? So, um, you know, we do social media for a networking event, um, a networking group, a big one here in the Midwest. And so whenever we go to their conferences, I like to live stream the exciting parts of their conference. So like the big gift to give away raffles, cause we can tag all the sponsors or, um, they do a really cool uh, part where a lot of people can come up and announce deals going on at their companies. So that was kind of a fun thing to live stream because it was it was talking about a lot of different deals going on, a lot of different companies, and a lot of different people that are in the organization. So if you happen to catch it, you might say like, hey, I didn't know he was a part of that. And you might look deeper. So I think if you can keep the goal of your social media, and you know, we're always looking at our social media goals as a whole anyway, and stepping back to readjust, it really helps you work streaming into your strategy. Right. <clears throat> and Jackson, I think about the fact that we stream a ton of events. Um, 
and uh, you know, you pretty much oversee most of that. So in doing that, I think Kate brings up a good point um, that we invite people for either video uh, recording or streaming all the time to say, hey, join us, and we invite them over. It's always the classic lunch line thing. Where we're like, hey, do you want to come on our show? You know, do you want to stream? We're going to be doing this at SMSS next week, exact same time. If you guys want to, um, if you guys want to sort of see how that works, but um, what do you think is important? I, I think it's important for people to say, well, if they don't want to try this on their own, to try it with people, and then you've helped sort of coordinate some of that. So, what about from your viewpoint? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Is not like necessarily. I, I see. A lot of people, you know, what we talked about with kind of building it up to be bigger and scarier and, you know, meaner than it is out there, uh, just because of the things that we see, you know, we experience. But if you had the opportunity to jump on someone else's live stream and be a part of someone else's live stream, then you can kind of get a feel for it. You can, you know, but it's, it's not your own. You're with people you know you're with other people like right now i'm with dean and kate and we're streaming on facebook right now and you know it's you know i personally i don't because i'm constantly streaming uh with social jack i i constantly uh tend to like i tend to not stream as much on the personal side of things when i do post video it's usually something that was filmed at a previous time uh, so, you know, that, but that's the kind of thing is that it's, it's together, you know, it's building that team and it's kind of representing a couple different things. Cause I'm not only representing social Jack right now, I'm representing my brand as Jackson Delisle. Right. So, and I think that's a big thing. And, you know, you, it, you know, the utilization of it for humanizing the brand as well as brand awareness. I, I think that's the, that, that's such a big thing with streaming. Yeah, and, so. I, and, I, and I like the collaborative nature of that too. So in the production side, how much is too much, you know? So like, I've seen a lot where, you know, like we used to do this too, is like, you know, live streaming in front of a green screen. So you have a green screen going behind you, you know, with the set and everything. Oh, I don't, um, this is all real. This oh, is it is? I'm okay. You, you did a nice build out there, Jackson. So <laughs> as you do that, um, how much, uh, you know, I, I'll see this like when uh, Chris was uh, live streaming on LinkedIn from uh, MDMC last week. Um, I was noticing that they were popping up things on the live stream during the live stream. So you'd see, oh, this is Chris and he's talking about this almost like you're watching you know, CNN or Fox, you know, news with stuff like breaking news, you know. Um, and, and Kate, you know, you've talked about not overproducing. So is there a balance there of using some of that, but not all of that? So, yeah, absolutely. I think it, it just has to do with how it serves your brand and your audience, you know, and I could definitely see Chris doing something a little more intricate like that because he live streams very often. That's something that his audience really understands about him, really tunes in to see. And so I could absolutely see him doing something um, like that because he's more familiar, he's more comfortable with live streaming and it makes more sense. Um, I do also want to add on too, because we've, we've talked about the fear of doing live streaming a couple times. Um, one thing that I think the platforms have done to really support you as the user and encourage you to jump in on live streams is they all have notifications set for when someone does a live stream that it alerts their followers, particularly if it's your first one. So, you know, and that all has to do with the algorithm, who you engage with online. But if it's your first live stream, they're going to alert a good amount of your followers that like, hey, Dean Delisle is going live for the first time. And I've even seen um, Instagram say for the first time, like he's going live and this is his first one. So they alert people in your network and let them know. And then if you get that kind of notification, most people are going to click and check it out. So I think that that kind of helps alleviate the fear of going live. Is anyone actually going to watch? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> One one thing that we uh, talk about too, and I think this is on our, um, we have a Facebook Live cheat sheet on Social Jack's Resource Center, which I think is is really cool. Um, but the idea here is um, for those of you that get nervous, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little reveal here. So Kate, when I was first dating, which was a long time ago, think about when I was in high school. Wow. Okay, that was a long time ago. So uh, so anyway, uh, I was really nervous when I had to. Um, 
talk to this girl. And I was like, I'm not sure what to do. And my dad's like, well, why don't you just bullet some things? And they had these three by five index cards. And so next oh, to the man. phone, I had some things so that I would know what to say, you know? Yeah. Now, now you can't shut me up. But the funny thing is it was like, you know, so, you know, I'm big on bullet points and, and you know, outlines and things like that. So, um, but it's funny that a lot of the tips are, well, just have, you know, stick to one theme or one topic of what you're going to talk about and then have just three nuggets that you're going to, you want people to walk away with and, and just create a simple outline. Does that make sense? Yeah, without a doubt. And I know, um, so my roommate does a lot of LinkedIn videos and he just got the live streaming feature. So he's been preparing to jump in on one and he bought one of the little um, phone tripods and he puts it up on a book and then puts his iPad underneath it and writes that he wants to say. So it's it's a good height. It gets him from up here and has his his notes underneath it. And yeah, you have a him that exact same one for Christmas. So that's exactly what he had. Um, but that's another great way. If you're scared that you're going to get, you know, tongue tied or forget what you want to say, or not really, you know, want to make sure that you hit all your points, help some notes, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. And Joby's, Joby's good. So as we, um, as we talk about that, <clears throat> so what I thought was interesting, uh, Jackson, I'm going to transition a little bit about just some, can I add some? Oh yeah. Quick? Oh, please do. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, going back a little bit to what you were saying about the, you know, how much is too much and how much, you know, is, you know, with the pop-ups and the you know, graphics that jump in there. So it really, you know, like Kate said, and I agree completely, it's all about, you know, what your, what your brand needs, you know, how, how do you want to be represented, you know, on, with your brand and with yourself, you know, how do you want to come across? And I think, you know, that's a big thing when you think about that is like, you know, are we, you know, so what we do is when we live stream this podcast, we don't put in any of the graphics, any of the, you know, overlays, anything uh, going across the bottom. Uh, we have an intro that gets added. If you only watch the live version, I encourage you to go check out one of the recorded ones. Cause we upload it to YouTube after the fact. And it is a, uh, you know, it's got a little bit more production value to it because after the fact we put it in, we adjust things. We, it's kind of like if you, uh, you, I finally got to go to New York and check out a show, uh, like a live show. I got to see uh, uh, late night with Seth Meyers and I got to see that, you know, so I watched the the raw, the, you know, cut and dry. Here it is. Here's the show. And then I watched it again when I recorded it back home. And, you know, there were things that he, he said that were cut out and replaced and things like that. Segments were kind of moved around a little bit. You know, it's it's not, you know, when you go live, it's it's, I think, supposed to be more authentic. And there's not a perfect answer to it. But I think, but like in our experience, that's what we see works best is when people just kind of show themselves here, here's what we're doing. Here's, yeah. you know, what it is, and there's so many things you can do with it. So yeah. Okay. Now you can move on. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now, and I want to piggyback a little bit off of that. So um, one of the things that's, um, that's interesting is we changed the format up here. So those of you that are part of our live audience, if you're live with us on Wednesday, uh, 424 2019 at 12 28 p.m. Central. Um, if you're with us at this moment, we like to give you the behind the scenes because for me, I, I was in broadcasting uh, radio just like with Kate, and I always thought the coolest part. And Jackson, I don't know, don't know if you remember me taking you to WLS Studios, but you got oh, to yeah. see behind the scenes, and I'm like, everyone should see this. And back then I forget the little cameras that first came out where you could record stuff on a stand, but I would record that. Cause I'm like, I want to see people hearing us plan and plot and, and do some of the behind the scenes. And I love the programs that do that. In fact, if you get chance, uh, I don't know who's baseball fans, but if you check out the San Francisco Giants, you can actually see the behind the scenes broadcasters and the control room before they go on the air and during they go on the air. So um, so anyway, I, I just like that. So, so we wanted to bring that behind the scenes preview, the in-between cuts. And to Jackson's point, when we polish it and, and, and publish it, 
we're publishing more of a finished product so you can see the before and after. And Edith, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't a camcorder. It was a little square white. Yeah, it was a flip cam. Flip cam, that was it. Because the, the USB used to flip out of the top, you'd pull it down, yeah. No, it, think, <laughs> okay, did you ever remember have, those? No, I didn't have a flip cam. Yeah, they were. They, um, those things were like revolutionary when they came out. Everyone <laughs> was like, you got to get a flip cam, you know? And now it's like. It's in your phone. Why do you right. still have a flip cam? It's like, so, so when I was with Chris uh, in uh, MDMC, Chris Strub is who we're talking about. So um, when he, when we're doing the Facebook live, I was intrigued that we could hook up to 10. Now it was only, uh, you know, iPhone devices to one stream and almost like you do uh, with your camera equipment, Jackson, where you can have multi cameras going into one stream. And it looked really easy. Like the control panel looks super easy, like almost, you know, like anybody could do it. What was that technology? So that, that was Switcher Studio, which he mentioned when he was on our show a couple weeks ago. Uh, the thing is, is like, you know, we, it really works if you have all Apple, all Mac, you know, software. So we don't have, we, we don't have all the, I, like Dean and Kate, yeah, they're on iPhone, but then they work off of a PC because we work a lot with Microsoft and things like that. So we, you know, they, they have other ones that, you know, can do things similar to that. But I think the technology with Switcher Studio is so uh, just easy to use and accessible for anyone, you know, especially if you're on iPhone, you know, who doesn't have an you know, iPhone? If you have an iPhone, you usually have an iPad. And if you have an iPad, you probably have a MacBook. And like, you know, it's just, it, it goes, and you can control it all off your MacBook, uh, I believe. And uh, also, yeah, that's what they were doing. Control, yeah, MacBook, iPad. But then you can hook up uh, iPads and iPhones on stands, just like the ones that we were talking about earlier, the little smartphone tablet stands. And you can have them basically like a full, uh, you know, video switchboard, switcher studio. Um, you can switch between each camera and show, you know, the different angles of the room. So it's real nice when you have like a panel of people, you know, because people, if they're going to tune into a live stream of a panel, I mean, a lot of times they're just going to listen to it. If there's nothing exciting happening, if there's no camera switching angles, you know what I mean? If it's a panel, yeah, they're still going to listen to it, but uh, the visual is not going to be as appealing as maybe switching between the two iPhones or, you know, three iPhones and you can get people, you know, the multiple people on your team. I'm not telling you to go out and buy like 10 iPhones because you don't, do don't do that. That's a, a bad investment. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's super cool. It's just, you know, cause we travel, you know, when we do events, it's usually like at least three of us at each event, uh, sometimes two, but still two camera angles are better than one. Uh, and you know, I think that that's really cool that you can, they made it so accessible for everyone. And I believe Chris said it was free Yep. to do it's completely free you know i've never personally worked with it i've seen people work with it and i've you know watched demos but personally i've never worked with it but I, you know i would love to get the opportunity i recently switched to android so it just kind of didn't, didn't work out for you for that so and, and what's that uh, camera that you use uh, that you'd use for our productions when we have like a stage-based appearance going yes on? So, uh, so when we have, you know, uh, it's a, a, an event live streaming camera by live stream and Vimeo. So what they know, what's the camera yeah, called? I know, I know okay. it's, I'm getting to it. I'm, it's all about the buildup. Uh, <laughs> if I just sat here and listened Damn off, second I, city people, <laughs> if I just sat here and was like Mevo, like people wouldn't watch, <laughs> you know what I mean? But go so, for it. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a Mevo. And what it does is it's one camera and you can basically, it shoots at a 180 degree angle and you can uh, narrow it in and select hot spots uh, on the stage of where you want it to uh, go. And then you can have on your phone, you basically have six to nine different uh, angles that you can tap and it'll cut to it. It'll real quick cut to the different uh, angles of the uh, camera. So that's, I think the, that's the coolest technology I've ever seen. And I think what's important here, Kate, I want you to chime in on this, but what I thought was awesome is whether you use the first version or you use what Jackson's talking about, 
is you can get the audience involved. Now, in some cases, I just want to make this statement, is that ideally, when you're going to have the audience on camera with you or others, you should technically have a release form. I mean, when we're, when we're friendly at a conference and things like that, we usually advise our conference folks to make sure that people sign those. And then you know what our, when we're filming and we're doing things like that, we make people sign a video release form, especially for live streaming, because once it goes live, you can't pull it back. Now, knock on wood, we've always been lucky that we've had friendly people playing, but then when you turn on the audience, and so, you know, they would have one phone facing the audience and one phone facing the stage. And Jackson, you've done this with multi cameras as well. Uh, just make sure that you have people release. But I love that audience engagement part. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And I know some of the events that the larger events that we've worked with, we've um, worked with them ahead of time to put that in the communication when people buy tickets. You know, we're going to have this event live streamed and, you know, by purchasing this ticket, you are pre-authorizing, you know, the your likeness used in uh, social media marketing materials. Boom. You know what I mean? It, it gets... It gets those down immediately it gets that out of the way and then if you want to feature someone in a live stream like a panelist or um, a keynote speaker or an attendee to kind of get a testimonial whatever it may be you know you just ask them one-on-one -on -one ahead of time like i'd like to do a live stream would you join and that's normally that normally covers all your bases yeah, yeah. that's cool and, and right now, Jackson, we're streaming uh, live on Facebook <clears throat> and Zoom. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's always interesting. But then we also manage two audiences. Somebody's watching this audience here, and then somebody's watching I'm, here, I'm saying the Zoom. But, uh, and the audience here on Facebook, somebody's monitoring that audience. So I just want to caution people that... Um, I think one of the one of the best things is when you're actually native streaming on anything that you're reading that you can visually see the people that are commenting and you're you're talking with that audience and acknowledging those and those are to me are some of the some of the best um, interactive streams that I'm part of. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think you know when any time that you you know stream through like zoom with uh, you know like what you said a place where you're managing two audiences um i i think that that it, it can go either way you know it can it can be really good you can have low turnout on one but high turnout on another but either way you know those two audiences are watching the same thing so it still is one audience that you are addressing and i you know i think that's you know something that uh, a lot of people I see struggle with, you know, especially with even the Mevo, you know, you have to manage the two different audiences because you can watch it through the lot, the way that you can split, you know, and I, because with the Mevo, Mevo, I can stream to Dean's Facebook page, mine, Kate's, and then the Social Jack page. But that way, you know, you know, there's multiple audiences and then also within live stream. So here we're just dealing with two Whereas there you're dealing with five now. So yeah. And then you also have live stream and YouTube live in play there as well sometimes, right? Yeah. So the only thing is a lot of times, unless you're using like a, um, a restream where uh, it'll, you know, take the stream and then push it out through a different, to a different place. Uh, but like a third party software that'll allow you to put it out. Uh, I think it's restream.io. Uh, and you know, it, uh, that, that one, I don't think is free. Uh, so you can, but you can take it and you can go, I want to stream here and I want it to stream here and you know, but like, it's not hosted on one, you know what I mean? It's basically going to be just through like a encoding software, like, uh, you know, OBS or, you know, different things like a switcher studio. So it basically hosted there and then through restream.io, it will go out through the different places without running into the issues of like with the Mevo, you have to pick, do I want to go on YouTube or do I want to go on Facebook? Because there are licensing issues oh, between right. using both at the same time through, um, you know, that, yeah, that's their, 
you know, rules. That's their rule. And I think we're going to see a lot more on that where um, there's a single stream. So this is a single stream going to two channels. And right now we're licensed with Zoom and we're granted uh, by Facebook, but, but Zoom is licensed with Facebook. So you've got this sort of gray area that everybody's feeling this out. And I think we just have to keep an eye on and we'll keep everybody advised of, but we see this as a changing landscape. Uh, even LinkedIn is not LinkedIn software. They actually have a third party app under the hood. Uh, and I think that's going to change from talking to my friends at Microsoft. They, they think that that's still going to change. So this is very experimental with, um, with LinkedIn. But um, so I think one of the big things is making sure that that the audience is engaged. And, uh, you know, so Kate, we manage the multiple audiences. How much effort is that to, to have two audiences going? Because I think that's reasonable, right? Yeah, it definitely is. I will say the thing that we combat the most is the lag. Facebook streams are always a little bit slower than it uh-huh else. Um, So there is a lag. So I know um, we have Emily, you know, doing the live tweeting and the engaging in the Facebook group right now. And then normally um, during this part, when you interview an influencer and I go dark, I'll engage with the Zoom Pete, with the Zoom attendees, because I've tried to do both at the same time. And it's, it's pretty difficult because of the lag. I'll be commenting on Facebook and listening on Zoom and saying like, oh, that was a great point from Dean. And then if I click over to Facebook, like you don't say it for another like 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm just like reading your mind or something. And right. like, <laughs> so I will say if you're going to do Facebook and something else, there's a, a large lag there to where you probably need somebody handling that audience separately. But that social media channel is where we find the most time discrepancy. So just keep that in mind. Um, well, I also wanted to add on, I'm sorry, did you have something to say about that? Well, yeah, just that, you know, when you're streaming anywhere, just plan for the lag because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's even on YouTube, I was doing a stream out in New York, we were streaming an event, I got to work with, you know, three, uh, with two PTZ cameras by uh, Panasonic, which are very cool if you ever get a chance to work with them, just super cool. You know, you can control, tilt, zoom, all of them, you know, you just, you have full control over them remotely and I think that's so cool. So, but that, that's my thing. If you're not into that, like just keep doing the iPhone thing. But, uh, that, you know, so we had three streams going into one and, you know, I'm trying to keep track of the YouTube on the other. And I'm like, okay, you know, sounds not working. Cause we were still, you know, in our test and I was like, oh no, sounds not working on this and all this. So then we finally figured it out, but it was because there was a 30 second delay. We weren't letting, we weren't letting the problem register. We weren't letting the solution register to fix the problem before we would try something else. We're like unplugging, plugging back in. So Mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, just like sit, you know, and you kind of breathe, go through it, make sure you're testing, you know, before you go live. Like that's, I'm thankful we did that. Otherwise, you know, who would have known what it would look like, but that's and another. Kate, yeah, I don't know if you guys do this, but there's a lot of times, um, it is a lot of times when um, uh, I will have the live stream up and you have to try to uh, train yourself not to be distracted to watch yourself. <laughs> but I'm looking for to see where, you know, I'll make a hand gesture and, and look to see if the timing stays or sticks too because as long as i've been doing this and it depends where you're broadcasting to if we're just local here in the u.s it's one thing but jackson and i have been producing a lot of things overseas which means i'll watch the meter and it tells you a lot of times especially in zoom or go to webinar and some of the other platforms when the audience is at a hundred percent of what they're viewing that means the whole audience is in sync And so sometimes you want to watch those indicators and those dashboards if you can. And Facebook just hasn't done it yet. But I see them starting, I've seen some advanced notes and them starting to give you more audience um, engagement tools so you can see where the audience is as part of the production. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of this stuff, like we said, is for larger productions. And I think that there's a value in pointing out that live streams can be done at any 
at any production level that you're comfortable with. You know, they can be done from the phone. We do some larger events and, um, you know, you guys have been tuning into Influence Factory for a while now, you know, 50 something episodes. And so you've been seeing the way that we've done it and it's, it's kind of catching on with podcasts as a whole. And so if you're interested in exploring um, the more casual podcasts now are offering live streaming, in addition to, because it's like Dean said, it's the cool behind the scenes part. It's humanizing of the podcast and it's normally the more conversational ones. But if you have a podcast that you watch, um, chances are they've been doing some live streaming. And so you could check it out if you wanted to get some inspiration or see how they do it. Um, Cause it's, it's becoming really big in the podcasting world. Yeah. And I'm going to have my uh, big equipment um, tip of the day. Jackson, you're going to smile when I say this, but the most important tip you can have is bring chargers. <laughs> you were right. I smiled. You were right. Uh, yeah, bring chargers. Always bring chargers. Uh, keep them charged up. Another big just electronic tip don't use your electronic device while you're charging it. I mean, not necessarily with laptops. Laptops, you know, you're constantly going. It's a lot of times you don't run into a place where you can do that. But don't use your, like, phones while you're charging them because then <laughs> you're passing through the um, uh, the electricity. You're passing it right through the phone, and it's getting used up right away. It's almost kind of like running your car while you're filling the gas tank. You just shouldn't do it. Uh, so, yeah. All right. As we, as we uh, come in on uh, only having a little bit time left, uh, I think, um, so Kate, you know, it's, uh, what would be the best way to uh, make sure that you get audience besides letting Facebook do it or when LinkedIn is ready or Instagram, um, bringing the audience to you? What are some things socially um, that you can, uh, that you can do to just bring some more audience, uh, to the live stream. Let them know you're doing it, right? I mean, all social media is a networking event. We talk about that all the time. And if if this is part of your social media strategy is going live, doing a behind the scenes at Social Media Strategy Summit, put it in the content calendar, plan for it and promote it. So um, for any of you that are members of our Business Influencer Alliance group, and I know some of you are listening through there, we plan unique live streams and programming right there in the Facebook group. One of which is tomorrow we have Rick Gosser, who's a longtime friend um, and attendee to our Influence Factor. I think he's on every week. He's and on right now. He's on right now, yeah. <laughs> and so he is doing a live stream tomorrow on change. And so we treated it like every other event. We made a photo. We uh, put it up as our cover photo, like Rick Gosser is going live stream at this time. I put it in his calendar. I sent him over some notes on what to do. We planned it ahead of time, just like we would any other event. And then tomorrow when he executes, people are going to know it's happening. So if you really work it into your marketing strategy, that's when you can really guarantee you have the most attendees. Now, I also see influencers on LinkedIn, people with lots of followers that get lots of attendees to a live stream, like particularly right now that LinkedIn just rolled it out. They've given it to some people that have 25,000 followers. So naturally, they got a lot of attendees. But even people like that, Quinton Alum, past guest on this program, he has probably 30,000 followers on LinkedIn and he even promoted his first live stream ahead of time and used the hashtag my first live stream to promote people and tell them it was happening. So if you treat it like any other event, any other networking event, which is how we should be treating social media as a whole to get the most engagement, I think you'll really see the most um, ROI and the most attendees. Yeah, there you go. For sure. Um, so I, I'd like to add something real quick. Yeah, go. So on YouTube, now what you can do is you can schedule out a live stream. So when oh, you right. click go live, you can actually set it up to schedule it and you can schedule exact time. And then you can tell people, hey, here's the link. Click this link at this time and, you know, go live. You can put a graphic in there, which will, you know, turn into the thumbnail at the end of the event. It'll, you know, make it uh, the thumbnail so you don't have just, you know, you like, like frozen in mid sentence, you know, on that. I'm always like that. I, I, I always forget. So like I did. So for those of you listening to the podcast, I did make a stupid face and I froze for a second. But if you're watching the recording, you already know that. So, <laughs> Me um, too. 
<laughs> Quick on three, let's do our, our frozen stupid poem. Yes. <laughs> <Cut. laughs> and I'm so expressive with my facial expressions. I'm always stuck in like the most ridiculous poses. I know. It's like like nice sneezing. Sneezing. that's what I'm Yeah, about. that's always mid sneeze. That's exactly what I go to. I'm like, <laughs> but um but yeah so definitely there you know to sum it all up there you know are tons of ways to stream at any level that you're working with you know you know doesn't matter the budget you can go on your phone everyone's got a smartphone these days if you don't have a smartphone you can go live from your uh laptop with this free just look up uh open broadcaster soft open broadcaster software just look that up Download the link. I'll put it in the show notes, and you can download this free, uh, you know, switchboard. And all you got to do is plug in a webcam. So yeah, then you can cool. go live from your desktop for free, as long as you have a YouTube, a uh, you know, a Facebook page, a Facebook, you know, Instagram uh, group, page. an Instagram. Yeah. Well, you really can't from your desktop. Go. That's, oh, yeah. no, you can't. Go from your phone at that point. But, but yeah. What? Yeah, but real quick, so, you know, do I hold it this way, this way? What do I do? So for live streaming, you're going to want to hold portrait mode uh, on mobile. So, yeah, that's going to be best because a lot of them don't pick up that you're turning it, that you're going to take it and go sideways. Um, YouTube, I believe, has fixed that problem and will, you know, turn with the phone. Um, That's right. Facebook, Facebook. I don't want to watch videos like this. Yeah, I, I don't. I I don't. I don't go live on Facebook as much as uh, you know. Mo- a lot of other people uh, that you know, not from my desktop or not from a you know third party camera. So I, I I'm not sure uh, right now if they have fixed that. Uh, but that will be something that I'll look at. No, yeah, you're right. For live streaming, still portrait mode is the way to go um, across all platforms. But regular LinkedIn or social media videos where you're just recording a video and posting it later or a picture, um, it's always, you know, sideways. Hamburger style, I say. Hamburger, hot dog. Or back to fifth grade. Hamburger, I love it. Hamburger. (laughs) Um, All right. So, uh, yeah, and, and as Rick says, just hold it steady. They made steady cams just for me. That's what Holly said. Exactly. Or get a tripod if you have an issue with that. You're right. Or 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 a partner, a person. <laughs> and and if you do, if you are taking a live stream for somebody, brace your elbows on a table. If you don't have a tripod, you know, there's there's different ways you can do this just to make sure it stays steady. Um so post-production, we've got a, uh, only a couple minutes left. Uh real quick. Um, when you're done with the uh, webcast, Kate, I'm assuming what we want to do is drive as many people back to the uh, recorded version of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's another great um, chance to tag people that might find interest in it and might want to watch it, you know, invite them to the middle school dance with you, tag people that were at the event, in the panel that you met there, um, great way to boost your visibility as well as share. We know that um, LinkedIn particularly, but lots of these algorithms, uh, Facebook's moving this way is uh, favoring personal individuals content versus company content. So if we did a live stream from Social Jack on LinkedIn, which we don't have access yet, but hopefully soon, um, we would share it from Dean's account because we know that he'll get more visibility than just the company page would. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, Julie was asking real quick if there's a time limit. And this is, uh, as of late, this is all over the board. So there's still, you know, if it's... um, if it's conversational, uh, I think you can go, uh, you know, several minutes up to five minutes. And we do have people going as long as uh, previous webcasts. But you want to be sensitive to your audience. You know, is there a reason you're keeping them there? Is it really good content? Is it, is it, are there things that can continue the conversation as part of it? Uh, but Kate, what do you think? I still th- uh, keep it, keep it brief, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just think that what you said is, is it intentional, right? Is it part of your marketing strategy and is it intentional? Like all content should be, we should never be posting just to post. We should never be streaming just to stream. So I think it varies. um, And we hear differing opinions. I remember last year at Social Media Strategy Summit during my influencer marketing workshop, I met um, a young woman that works for Door County Tourism Association in Wisconsin. And she said their best attended live stream was a 40 minute live stream at dusk 
risk of boats coming into the harbor. And she was like, I don't even know. Like everybody said, don't do it this way. But for some reason they got thousands of views and it went viral because it was just so freaking visual, appe- visually appealing. So honestly, I just think it varies if the people that are in your live stream are running out of conversation or if people don't really want to be a part of it anymore, or if it's feeling like it's this, been the same content for, you know, five or so minutes, I'd say probably cut it off. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So then, uh, Jackson in 60 seconds, best post-production software. Best post-production software. So if you're working on a Mac, I would just stick with, if you're just doing quick, short stuff, just uh, iMovie. iMovie is super quick and easy to use. Um, And then on, you know, if you're using Adobe, you can use Adobe Spark or Adobe for just quick, short, you know, short form content. For longer stuff, I would obviously Premiere or, uh, you know, Sony Vega or there Mm -hmm. is one more... um, Final Cut, which is on Mac. Oh, so, if on, yeah. so if you're doing more high production work, you need to use, you know, green screen stuff, more of that. Then I would look into Final Cut. It's like, I think, I think 300 uh, one time. So, I mean, that's not the worst price. Whereas, you know, like with Creative Cloud, you got to pay monthly or, you know, you can buy the software for, you know, around the same. Yeah. And I'm so, old school. I still use Camtasia. So I mean, Camtasia is a great one as well. So yeah. you can split audio good. tracks and cuts and things like that. So remember, no matter where you're at in the journey, you can use whatever makes sense. But um, what I would encourage you to do is if there's something that you use that is uh, that you think is beneficial, it's easy, it's cheap, or maybe it's just very good at what it does. I encourage you to put comments. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, please add those comments in here. Uh, if you're part of the Facebook Live, please put those comments in there so the audience can see that. Um, and then uh, also on social media, once we post this, uh, we'd like to invite you to comment on the episode uh, so that we can learn from you as well, because there are so many thousands of apps. And I mean, it's just uh, almost to the point of overwhelm, uh, to the point of how many apps that I have on my phone, uh, how many tools that we have that we use, and then some that we buy and we don't use. It's pretty crazy. They all send you notifications. <laughs> yes, they all send you notifications. Oh my gosh. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, we want to encourage you not just to learn from us, but to teach and learn from each other. That's our big thing here. And then, uh, also please, um, if you did learn something from here today, please share this with your friends, uh, join us on social and, and push it out there and, uh, tag us. If you have questions, like Jackson said, we're always willing to jump in and answer questions for you. And if we didn't get to any questions during the program that you've asked, we will definitely uh, respond to those in the business influencer alignment. Alliance group. So we'll make sure that we respond to those. I think there's a couple in here that we want to attend to. So with that being said, since we were all working this, do we know who the winners are? No, I was actually just thinking that <laughs> like, like, as you were saying that I'm like scrolling through everyone, but uh, you know, on the zoom, I, it was Edith Bell. She was the most, uh, she was constantly uh, commenting, you know, asking questions. She was actually the, one of the first ones on, and she was she saw when Dean got locked out of his office. For those of you that jumped <laughs> out a little bit later, Dean got locked out of his office. Yeah, see the things you miss when you don't log on early, right? Yeah, even the Facebook Live saw it. It was really cool. So if you didn't catch that, that part will be on Facebook Live, and I will probably have to edit that out for the – uh, uploaded version on YouTube. So let's, you let's give one out. Let's give one out to Jaya too. He's out in San Diego. He, he tuned in today and he's been, uh, he's been probably one of my most engaged texting people all week. Uh, and then, uh, also, uh, he let us use, uh, the art studio Jackson where we had a phenomenal experience out there. Oh, so that was phenomenal. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So that was yeah. huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, yeah. So then Katie Fentress on Facebook live. Katie. Woo. All right. Nice job. All right. So uh, don't forget, folks, if you use that Starbucks card, when you take somebody, please share what you learned today and make sure that you teach others as you're learning. That makes you an influencer, a thought leader, and a very valuable person out there. Kate, any final words? And when you take them for coffee, make sure you Facebook Live it. Yes. (laughs) Duh. Use the hashtag my first Facebook Live. (laughs) Right on. All right. Thanks to all of our winners out there. And remember, you're all winners and you're all influencers. So we will see you on the next program and uh, we'll definitely see you online. Take care, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the Influence Factory podcast. We welcome feedback and suggestions. You can provide these by visiting our website at www.myinfluencefactory.com. And if you are interested in Social Jack's 90 Days to Influence program, you can simply go to 90daystobusinessinfluence.com and simply ask for the next steps. While our program airs regularly on Zoom webcasts and Facebook Live on Wednesdays at noon central, we invite you to download episodes on your favorite channel, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, and who knows where else in the future. We will also provide occasional on-location live streams with special guests that we will announce in our community Facebook group, Business Influencer Alliance, as well as on all Social Jack channels. Our mission is to help you build your digital business influence with this podcast, as well as inspire, educate, and entertain those who are hungry to collaborate in a cool place with cool business professionals just like you.